Good morning, everybody. Today is Monday, April 6th, and we have CNN 10. <clears throat> Thank you for taking the chance for CNN 10. Objective explanations of woke news for a global audience. I'm Carl Williams. <coughs> We've quoted health experts who've said this worldwide coronavirus pandemic is going to get worse before it gets better. The turnaround point is still unknown. When we assembled this show, there were more than 1,250,000 cases of COVID-19 confirmed around the world. Roughly a fourth of them are in the United States, the nation with the most cases. And the Trump administration says a big test is coming over the next couple weeks. This will be probably the toughest week between this week and next week. This is the moment to not be going to the grocery store, not going to the pharmacy, but doing everything you can to keep your family and your friends safe. And that means everybody doing the six feet distancing, washing your hands. Coronavirus is expected to cause more deaths this year in America than the seasonal flu usually does. Keeping physical distance from other people is our most important tool, according to a U.S. medical official. And he says this may already be paying off in Washington state. Meanwhile, in New York, the hardest hit state, the governor says coronavirus deaths might be approaching their apex, their worst point, or that they could be hitting a plateau. Okay, so we've talked about this quite a bit. Um, one of the reasons we are doing school online is because of the coronavirus. Um, it is now in America, and it is affecting tons of people. Um, the state of New York was completely shut down. Um, and they're experiencing the highest um, numbers right now. Plateau. This is because the number of daily deaths in New York slightly decreased at one point this weekend, though officials say it's still too early to tell if things are turning around there. There are other states that haven't seen the worst of this disease yet, and the lack of testing continues to be a problem in several parts of the U.S., so it's hard to get a clear picture of who's caught COVID-19. Over the weekend, there was a hopeful sign from Italy, where more than 15,000 people have died from coronavirus. On Sunday, the European country saw its lowest daily number of deaths in more than two weeks, and the number of patients in critical care also decreased for the second day in a row. So potentially good news there, but experts say it could still take some time before this happens across the United States. <clears throat> So what they're saying is that in some countries, the illness is waning. It's going away slowly. Um, Italy is one of them. And also where it originated in China is <clears throat> also getting life back to normal. Remember when spring breakers in Florida wouldn't stop partying even after the coronavirus pandemic hit the United States? What happened when spring break was over? We can actually track movement of these devices over the remaining weeks of March, seeing where these devices went after spring breakers left the beach. So what you're seeing in this video is what happens if people do not exercise social distancing, where a group of individuals, you know, or a few thousand people in this case, gathered at a beach in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and all the places they've traveled, showcasing how interconnected our world is. Josh Anton runs X-Mode, a company that tracks the movement of devices like cell phones. His team says it's used location data to track where everyone on the beach in Fort Lauderdale in March went after they left, including those spring breakers. From New York to the Midwest, even Canada. You know, the power of this location data, it can be used to understand not only, you know, how people and where people are, are, are traveling post-gathering, uh, post but also potentially to prepare and to be proactive if something happens, right? To be able to identify future hotspots of where the coronavirus could happen before it happens. But the applications of X-Mode's technology go way beyond sunburned co-eds. Anton says the company tracks 25 million devices every month in the United States and millions more around the world. X-Mode says it would be willing to work with governments and other groups to help stop the spread of the coronavirus. We work with uh, you know, apps that have a real location use for use case for running location, whether it's transit apps, whether it's uh, weather apps or apps that... So this is kind of interesting. Um, it's using the people's cell phones 
to track their movements. Um, so once they've been <clears throat> with somebody that might have had the virus, they can track their movements to track where they might have um, submitted the virus to, um, where it'll go, how far it'll travel. I'm alert you about the earthquakes happening near you, right? Um, we then integrate our location uh, technology to allow data sharing uh, where a user can opt in to uh, sharing their location data. We comply with GDPR, we can comply with CCPA, but we try to go a step beyond it, which is um, you know, being what we call privacy conscious. The company claims it licenses that data to third parties, including advertisers, without any personal identifying information. Can your technology be used to track individuals? Can it track me? Um, it could, right? But we don't allow that. We don't allow any of our partners to do that because we just don't think that's the right thing to do. While Anton says his company makes every effort to keep data secure and doesn't identify the owners of the devices it is tracking, there are serious privacy concerns about this kind of technology. In 2018, a New York <coughs> Times investigation showed how location data could be used to identify the specific owner of a particular device. You know, I don't think a lot of people realize that even this technology exists, that it's out there. And I think some people are pretty creeped out. What would you say... Uh, to folks who have concerns when they sort of see that, that you can track devices like this. I'm going to quote Uncle Ben from uh, Spider-Man, which is, with great power comes great responsibility, right? Um, you know, I think there's a fine line. I think it's very important that users consent to this, and it's very important that you act, act ethically with that data. Ten-second trivia. Which of these nations is made up of 47 regions? France, Japan, Morocco, or Indonesia? What do you guys think? Which of these nations is made up of 47 regions? With 47 prefectures or regions, Japan is the answer. Call it a virtual vacation, a pseudo-sabbatical, a fabricated field trip. No, it's not as good as going somewhere in person. But our new travel series can help us all escape the coronavirus news and restrictions. And while we have taken a trip to Tokyo recently, we haven't shown you the wonderland of northern Japan. If the cold never bothered you anyway, then the Hakoda Mountains in winter are a great place wow, to see what's Wow, that's pretty. When the winter snow starts falling in Japan's northern Tohoku region, a blizzard is never far behind. That's when most local residents find shelter indoors. Not Yutaka Ono. Snow hiking. What I like about snow hiking is the winter scenery. Nature is beautiful. I love it. It's like a Japanese ink painting, black and white and a world of silence. Ono is snowshoe trekking through the Hakoda Mountains, a series of volcanic peaks in the remote Aomori prefecture. <coughs> it's one of the snowiest, most wild places on Earth. The hotels, trees, even street lamps are buried in snow. For skiers, Hakoda's powder is the stuff of dream. So this, basically, this mountain is closed down because of the snow every year. Look how beautiful it is. They're talking about it being a skier's dream right now. Many of the runs are on backcountry slopes suited only for the most daring. This place is a little different because there aren't very many cut runs into the mountain. It's a real, real kind of choose your own adventure, find your own path. It's very interesting. Despite sub-zero winds, finding warmth here isn't hard. <coughs> Thermal springs bubble across the mountain. People have bathed in onsens, as they're known here, for centuries. So the thermal hot springs, um, basically what that means is there's hot water coming out of the ground. And um, you can bathe, you can relax in it. Kind of like a, nature's um, hot tub. <laughs> And it's probably due to the fact that the mountain um, is a volcano. A winter wonderland, yes. 
but Japanese history also remembers Hakoda as a place of disaster, where the cold claimed the lives of a military expedition gone wrong over a century ago. The landscape can be both beautiful and severe. This is Hakoda, and that's the nature of nature. But it's something that I want visitors to experience and enjoy here through guides like me. Snowy, wild, and for Ono, a world of silence worth the trek. There have been seismic changes around the world during the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, and we mean that literally. With lockdowns in place around the world, there are fewer vibrations in the earth that are normally caused by highway traffic, trains, buses, people moving around, going about their daily lives. The relative quietness has led to what scientists call less seismic noise, and that has made it easier for them to detect events like small earthquakes. So this is all a shakeup, but not tectonically. People still wake up, but they mean electronically. The ground has shifted. It's changed the nations. The footing is shakier. There are fewer good vibrations. This fault in our world and its seismic fate make a troubling historic time and place. I'm Carl Azus. Our last stop today is in Roseville, California. We're happy to see the students of Roseville High School. Thank you for taking the time to watch CNN Tech. <laughs> So that was an interesting piece of information um, there at the end where um, they were talking about since a lot of the world is um, staying at home. Everybody is forced to stay inside where they are right now. Um, there's less vibrations being created by humans. So seismologists, which are scientists who study um, the ground and earthquakes, are able to locate smaller and more frequent earthquakes than they normally would because there's not as much traffic, there's not as much vibration. Um, it's pretty interesting. Anyway, you guys have a great day, and I hope to talk to all of you soon. We miss you greatly.